So today or tonight, my sharing would be about the formula in terms of breaking barriers because there are very, very important ingredients for everyone to be able to break barriers or in layman's, we call it about shattering or breaking the glass. Because more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have these self-imposed limitations. And if you're a truly achiever, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that every year you try to break your own records, not only uh, about your income, could be probably about your uh, relationship. You want to take your relationship to a different level. It could be your career advancement, or it could be about breaking barriers in terms of your business or how far you have gone. But we have to take in consideration how people actually break barriers. And tonight, I'd be sharing with you what I've learned over the last 20 years that I've been involved in this industry about the four key ingredients of breaking barriers that everyone actually can do. You know, breaking barriers is not about magic or it's not just about being great. There are actually people all over the world who have applied important formulas for them to be able to break those barriers. And uh, everyone, practically you and I, can actually use this formula to break our own barriers. Again, it's just not about breaking barriers in terms of your income, breaking barriers about your career advancement. It could be applied to every particular areas in our lives. That's why it is very easy to memorize, ladies and gentlemen, the number one key ingredients. These are very, very important. It's like trying to bake a cake where you gather these ingredients and you try to, of course, apply the principles in uh, you know, baking a successful cake. But that's, that doesn't mean that it's just about the ingredients. It's about the, the skills, of course, of gathering and using these ingredients to actually come up with a very, very good cake. And number one, of course, among these ingredients, there must be a preparation. What I mean by preparation is that the hard work of building capabilities cannot be ignored. You know, if you want to break barriers, ladies and gentlemen, you must take time to really build your capabilities, your talents, and your skills. You know, breaking barriers doesn't happen overnight. You know, to become successful, success is measured not in miles or doing some big things. To become successful, ladies and gentlemen, as they say, success is measured in inches. It's doing small, small things every day that you know are vital for your ultimate success towards the end. So it's very important there, that there must be preparation. And for all those people you have seen who have broken records, whether it's in sports, whether in their personal lives, whether in their career, whether in business, or even in our industry, you must or you must be able to see these people. You have seen these people prepare. Took so many time for them to prepare to build their skills, to build their capabilities. No one ever become great overnight. You know, for some people, they see, they think that success is overnight. I, I've, I've seen or I've watched, I've read this story about one successful person in FB, and he said, you know, success is overnight and 40 years. All right? Meaning, his overnight success apparently took him 40 years to become an overnight success. You could see Joseph Lim, you could see Roy Zaldua, you could see, of course, Albert Jasma and all other sharers become successful. But behind the scene, ladies and gentlemen, it took them a lot of time to prepare. So I'd like to tell you that, you know, before you even break barriers, it is important to actually to take time to prepare, to build your capabilities. So that's why sometimes if you ask yourself, why aren't you getting anything in terms of your results? Let me tell you where you are right now. Probably you are still in the beginning or you are still in the preparation stage. That's why you should never, ever get discouraged. People take a lot of time to prepare. People like take a lot of time to build their capabilities. And actually, if you measure success, you know, success could be overnight, but it takes years to become prepared for your own success. Number two, number two key ingredient, it's not just about building the capabilities. It's about having the right character because character plays a very, very important role. It's not just about having the right skills. We saw a lot of people, we see a lot of distributors around us. You know, they're good in speaking, they're good in 
building their network. They're very good in terms of prospecting, presenting, closing, and all these skills. But sometimes it's not just a matter of skills. It's important that you must have the right character, the integrity and values, values like commitment, belief, determination, of course, vision, compassion, and of everything. Those are put into action on a daily basis by the person who seeks to surmount barriers allows a person to deal effectively with the resistance that is inevitable. So I'd like to highlight the last part where it says, effectively deal. Can you imagine? Effectively deal with the resistance which is inevitable. So you, which means if you are trying to break barriers. Again, in the beginning, I've said if you're a real achiever, you know, you have to break barriers. You cannot just be an average distributor. If you want to become an icon in this industry, if you want to become really big in this industry, you know, you have to achieve and you have to break barriers every year. Whether, you know, in every areas of your life, it doesn't matter. But the important thing to remember is that when you try to break barriers, there is, and you can never prevent this, resistance and it's inevitable. Resistance probably from people around you. Resistance probably from things that you cannot control, like, you know, what we are dealing with right now, the pandemic all over the world. And we are, the, the whole world is facing this, uh, you know, pandemic, this dilemma, this crisis, and no one is excused to this. But it's a matter of our character playing the right role in terms of dealing with this pandemic because a lot of people, you know, with this pandemic, pandemic became a blessing to them. We've seen a lot of our distributors here where, you know, during the pandemic, it was the time they broke their first million. It was the time they brought their, they bought their, their machines or their cars, their big cars, like in the group of Albert, he was saying earlier that some of his downlines this year are going to, you know, break barriers by buying not just ordinary cars, but, you know, muscle cars, sports cars. So, ladies and gentlemen, if, if there are people who are becoming successful in the midst of this pandemic and there are people who are not, it's not because of the circumstances around us. Like what Miko said, it's about our internal power, and that is our character. Next is that, of course, as other than preparation, other than having the right character, it is important that a barrier breaker, all right, if you want to become a barrier breaker, all right, you must have something special, something extraordinary to offer, such as probably a talent, a perspective, or probably a special skills that provide real benefits. What I'm saying here is that if you want to break barriers, ladies and gentlemen, you can never be an average person. Because an average person doesn't get, you know, extraordinary results. If you're an average person, probably you take action in the average way of doing, doing things. If you're an average person, probably your mindset is for average person. And if you are thinking, ladies and gentlemen, in an average way of thinking, if you are taking actions in terms of average way of taking action, don't expect that you will get extraordinary results or don't expect to break barriers. Because if you're an average person, you normally get average result or even under average result. So you must develop yourself into something that is extraordinary. Probably you can work harder than the rest. Probably you can, you know, develop these specialized skills in network marketing where, you know, a lot of people are really good in uh, building their network. So that's why they build their capabilities in network building in terms of their skills. So. What is very, very important is that you set your mind that you have to be extraordinary because barrier breakers are not average people. Those who have broken the first million in AIM Global or Empowered Consumerism or in our Ed Plan 2.0, believe me, they are no ordinary distributors. What I'm saying is they started ordinary, but they developed themselves into someone who is extraordinary now. And by applying all these formulas, I'm telling you, you can also be a barrier breaker this year and in the next years to come. Number four, very important ingredient. I will summarize preparation, character, of course, offer something that is extraordinary or special. And number four, ladies and gentlemen, opportunity must exist. There must be an opportunity where you can break a particular barrier. Of course, if you are prepared. 
if let's say you are you have the right attitude, you have the right character, you're playing the right role, and not only that, let's say, you know, you have something very important to offer, real benefits and perspective. It could probably be about your talent or your skills. But if there is no opportunity that exists to break any barriers, then your preparation is useless. Then your character is useless. So there must be an opportunity that exists. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone, for us to better understand how this formula and how you could use these four key ingredients in terms of breaking any barriers you want to set or any barriers that there are in your way, probably your self-imposed limitations, probably about your confidence or personality, probably about your relationship with other people. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at some people who were able to break some barriers. Let's look in sports. For example, we have Jackie Robinson, the first African-American in 1942 who broke the so-called color barrier. Why there is a, such, a, such a barrier or a color barrier at that time? Because ladies and gentlemen, in American baseball, before 1947, the only people who are allowed to play baseball are the white Americans. Well, we all know for a fact that there was you know, racial discrimination at that time in the U.S. And so, you know, the, the African-American were considered second-class citizen. And some of them were actually, you know, uh, during the 1800s, 1700s in the U.S., they were actually slaves. And this kind of culture in the States actually, you know, transpired even in the 21st, early 21st century. So in, in their national sports, which is American baseball, African Americans are not allowed to actually play. But in 1947, a young man in the name of Jackie Robinson broke the so-called color barrier. And what did he do, ladies and gentlemen, to break this barrier? Number one, he was prepared. When we say he was prepared, he worked hard to develop his skills. He knew he could never be like those American white American uh, baseball players, he knew that he had to have an extraordinary capability. And that's why he prepared himself so much that he dedicated so much time to develop his skills in terms of running and stealing some base because we have these four bases in American uh, baseball. So he developed skills over a period of time. And, you know, by applying this formula, ladies and gentlemen, he broke the so-called color barrier. And not only that, being the first African-American to ever play, it was, of course, obvious. It was, of course, uh, expected that he will be, you know, facing a lot of shunning, facing a lot of resistance from a lot of people, including the players, including some coaches, including some baseball owners themselves. And, of course, he took a lot of resistance and shunnings from insults of his fans or the fans of baseball for but for that matter and so his character played a lot of role he was not only fast in stealing bases but he had this character ladies and gentlemen a depth of character to resist the shunning of other players and the barrage can you imagine not simple insults but barrage when you say barrage a lot of info insults coming from different sources. And ladies and gentlemen, he had something to offer. The third formula, the third key ingredient in this formula. What is that? He had a wonderful ability to put on a dramatic display every time he stole a base. What does that mean? Ladies and gentlemen, he was not boring. When he was trying to steal some base, he put on a dramatic display where the fans got excited. It was something that, uh, you know, unique to the game because it was so dramatic when he tried to steal some games, like creating some excitement and suspense all over the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was something unique from him. It was something that is special for him. And the fourth key ingredient in this formula is, of course, there was an opportunity. Opportunity existed when the team owner, all right, of Brooklyn Dodgers, ladies and gentlemen, offered him the chance to play as the first African-American baseball player in the U.S. 
So there was an opportunity for him, but let me tell you this. Even if there was the opportunity, but he was not ready, I don't think that the team owner will ever choose him. So my challenge to everyone is that, you know, there's a lot of opportunity around, especially in empowered consumerism, in, in uh, our ed plan or economy driver plan. There exists a lot of opportunity in your own team with the power of your mentor uplines and, of course, your uh, sponsors. But the challenge is, are you ready? Next, let's see the life of another uh, barrier breaker in the form or in the name of uh, Mr. Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager is the first person, the first test pilot, all right, in the history to ever break the so-called sound barrier. Sound buyer means, you know, he, he flew an airplane, he flew a jet plane that can fly faster than the speed of sound. Can you imagine what is the speed of sound like I'm talking to you right now and how fast the sound is when it reaches your ears? When I talk, it reaches your ears. How fast is that? Let me tell you. By figure, sound, the, the speed of sound is about 1,235 kilometers per hour. So let's try to imagine this for the people who are driving. I drive cars and sometimes when I go to, you know, our national highway here or our expressway here, I drive about 120 kilometers per hour. Or if I know that there's no radar or there's no people looking at the speed, probably I could go to a maximum of about 140 to 150 kilometers per hour. And you can just feel the enormous strength of the machine, of the engine, at 150 kilometers per hour. That's already so fast. Some Formula One drivers, they drive their cars like 300 kilometers per hour. If you ever ride, let's say, a Jumbo or let's say a Boeing or a jet engine, that could run or that could fly about 400 kilometers per hour. But at 1,200 kilometers per hour, oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of potential danger can happen to you. But in 1947, this wonderful guy, Mr. Chuck Yeager, broke the sound barrier. And how, how he did, did he do that? By applying the formula that I've just discussed with you. Number one, he was prepared. He was relentless, ladies and gentlemen, a relentless quest for improvement into level of skills that earned him the top test assignments. He developed skills over a period of time where he knew that he, he could be chosen as the top test pilot. Because at the time, you know, if you try to, to break some barriers, especially with the sound barrier, you know, they chose pilots uh, who are assigned to actually, you know, uh, we call test pilots, or they test some kind of airplane, engines, machines, and everything. And he made sure, Mr. Yeager made sure that he was prepared for that assignment. And not only that, he, not, he was not only prepared, he had this character, ladies and gentlemen, he demonstrated an extraordinary capacity to remain calm and focused in stressful situation. Because can you imagine if you try to, again, ride a car, drive a car, or probably, uh, you know, uh, ride an airplane or test uh, uh, an airplane, and you will reach up to about 500 to 1,000 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine all the shaking, the turbulence, all this resistance and all these potential dangers that you are about to face. But uh, Mr. Yeager, what he did was he was, you know, he was known to remain calm. He was known to remain focused in stressful situation. And this stressful situation is not only applicable in, you know, trying to break the sound barrier. Every one of us faces a lot of stressful situation every day. And probably one of the most stressful situations we ever face is, of course, having to live in our generation with this pandemic. But it's a matter of being calm and at the same time uh, being focused because there's actually, we can practice grace under pressure. And for a lot of people, we, keep, we, we actually think better if we are calm, if we are focused, and we are under grace. So Mr. Yeager had this kind of character. That's why he was the one who first broke the sound barrier. And number three, he had something to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, he possessed extraordinary commitment to one thing. He just did the work. He never complained. Of course, taking big risk, he was afraid. He had this fear, but he focused on just doing the work. He never complained. And most of us, when we try to 
you know, break our own records, accomplish some things, or probably achieve some things, we try to we, 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 we got overwhelmed with a lot of these distractions. And I think that is one among the topics of uh, Mr. Mikkelson earlier about these distractions. And if, if we want to, you know, really focus on getting what we want, one of the most important things is that we just try to do the work in front of us and never try to be intimidated of what's going to happen. And of course, number four formula is that there's an opportunity for him to break the sound barrier, which means he was selected to fly the rocket-powered Bell XS-1 because of his outstanding flying skills. He had these wonderful flying skills. Again, there was an opportunity. No one ever broke the, ba the sound barrier. And he had these skills. He had this wonderful character. And he was ready for it. That's it. Four key ingredients rolled into one. The guy was ready. He broke the sound barrier. Last, of course, we, we, we try to look at the life of one of the most successful businessmen in the whole world in the form of, of course, Mr. Sam Walton. Mr. Sam Walton was an American businessman best known as the founding for founding the retailers Walmart and Sam's Club in the U.S. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, Walmart Stores Incorporated grew to be the world's largest corporation by revenue. Can you imagine the world's in terms of, uh, you know, uh, magnitude? It was not just it was not just an ordinary um, corporation or company. He built Walmart as the biggest, largest corporation by revenue, and as the one of the biggest private employer in the whole world. He broke that barrier just by having a discount store we call Walmart or Sam's Club. And how did he do that? By applying the four key ingredients and knowing the formula we are discussing tonight. And that formula, ladies and gentlemen, well, in 1962, he started by borrowing 20,000 US dollars from his uh, father in law. All right. He started Walmart in 1962. But after 12 years, in 1974, he had about 78 stores. And his competitors have about 851 stores. We call it Sears in the US. And Kmart at that time was the largest retail store, which has about 1,326 stores. But, ladies and gentlemen, look at this. By, all right, 2004, he had about 4,400 retail stores all over the U.S. and a revenue of about $250 billion in 2004. Right now, let me tell you the current statistics. There are over 11,000 Walmart stores right now in the whole United States. And their revenue is about $476 billion every year. Coming from just one store, and he borrowed the capital of about $20,000. US How did he do that? Number one ingredient, preparation. He had a great passion for learning. You know what did he, he do? He was not a retailer. What he did was he go to these other stores, learned everything there, and applied every strategy he could in his small store. He was prepared. Number two, he had this character. His resourcefulness was his ultimate resource. For a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, their complaint is, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough you know, skills. I don't belong to the right group. I don't have the right prospect and everything. You are always looking for the resources outside of you. But let me tell you this. The ultimate resource is your emotion. Because your ultimate resource would be your creativity, your innovative spirit, your compassion, your determination, and your indomitable spirit. And number three key ingredient is he had something to offer. What do I mean by something to offer? He was great. He was a great project entrepreneur in retail chain industry because at the time, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of big stores are putting up their businesses in big cities. But what some what but what Mr. Sam Walton did was he created these stores, all right, uh, and made it available to small cities so that he could reach to small consumers. And it was something special that only him could offer at the time. That's why he grew so big. And of course, number four, opportunity existed. How did the opportunity exist for this guy? He borrowed 20,000 US dollars to put up a Ben Franklin variety store. Ben Franklin at this time was, 
was a uh, known franchise store. And from there, he developed his, his skills. He developed his uh, retail skills. And then he grew big. So what I'm saying is that, again, some of you probably would borrow your, your 15 accounts, your 7 accounts, your 3 accounts. And from there, you could grow your business, business in AIM Global or Empowered Consumerism. The important thing is you must know how to maximize the available opportunities around you. So we have three very important examples. Jack Robinson, Chuck Yeager, and of course, Sam Walton. Now, let me ask you, how about you? Okay, it's your turn. How about you? What barrier would you want to break? All right, probably you want to break, uh, you know, you could be the first self-made millionaire in your family. Probably you want to be the first, uh, you know, person to ever own a car in your family. Probably you want to earn your first million. It's a barrier you want to break. Probably you want to be the, the wealthiest person in your community or whatever. Or probably it could be a personal barrier in forms of fear, doubt, in the form of self-sabotage attitudes, in terms of, let's say, limitations, in terms of self, uh, low self-esteem and everything. And again, how do you break these barriers? Let's just apply the four basic key ingredients. Number one, you know, the formula to break barriers, preparation. Whatever it is you want to break, whether it's about your income, it's about you know, uh, the poverty in your family that runs in your family, or probably it's about your first million, or probably it's about uh, your self-confidence, your self-esteem, or whatever. It's important to take note of this very important key ingredient. Number one, prepare. By why? By what? By how? Practice, patience, and persevere. Practice a lot. If you're not getting your goal yet, it's okay. Practice a lot and be patient because it takes time to really master a particular skills. And you have to practice a lot until such time that that particular skills become a part of your nervous system. Sometimes we give up easily and uh, we never internalize that particular skill because we don't persevere. So it's important, ladies and gentlemen, that you persevere until such time that something, ladies and gentlemen, will become just a second nature to you or innate to you. When we say innate, it becomes a part of your, of your nervous system. Number two ingredient, of course, your character plays a lot of role in this business. If you want to become successful, really break some barriers. The most important character you must have other than determination, other than commitment, other than hard work, and all these things is your indomitable spirit, which happens to be our theme last year because you will never be able to really break some glass ceiling. You will never be able to really break some barriers if you do not have that strength of character. It's not just about having the right skills. It's also having the emotional stamina to really break those barriers. Number three, key ingredient, something to offer. You must possess something extraordinary. And you can become extraordinary by putting in the extra amount of effort, by putting in the extra amount of time to develop yourself. Again, do not be just an average distributor because if you think like an average distributor, you will get an average result. What you need to do, Develop yourself, your character, both internally and externally, to be able to possess something extraordinary. You work hard on being extraordinary. I'm telling you, you will get extraordinary results in this business. And last, opportunity must, of course, exist. Even if you are prepared, even if you all, ha all have these skills and everything, even if you are able to enhance and craft your character, and even if you have something to offer, if there is no opportunity around you, you'll never be able to apply or you'll never be able to really break barriers. So what I mean by opportunity must exist, well, opportunity can come in the form of your upline. When your upline probably is looking for someone to develop, someone to develop at, as his great downline one day or someone to develop as a great leader. The question is, are you ready to rise to the occasion? Why would your upline choose you from a lot of people in his downlines if you, have, if you don't have something special to offer? So you must rise to the occasion. You must really shine when the opportunity exists where your upline is really looking for someone to develop and to really dedicate his time, put in the right commitment. Are you the leader or the downline who is ready for that? Opportunity could come in the form of your 
appliance or your team where the team is really looking for direction. The team is looking for a leader. It could be your time to shine. Because sometimes, you know, the most important thing in your group is having a sense of direction. And probably your downlines are looking for a sense of direction, a vision, a path that they can actually follow. And again, you must rise to the occasion when the, this kind of opportunity exists. You must be there and you must be ready in the first place. Sometimes, you know, my challenge to each and every one of you is that how many good opportunities have come into your way, but you were never able to maximize them simply because you were not ready and you did not rise to the occasion. Let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to challenge each and every one of you. Do not let 2021, 2021 pass without you really maximizing and grabbing the opportunity where you have the chance to rise to the occasion. Never miss the chance because 2021 is going to be a year where we will be able to break some barriers. But my challenge to you is, are you ready? So if you are, type in your comment section, I am ready. I am ready. Type in your comment section, not just I am ready. Put in a lot of exclamation point. Because exclamation point means you are claiming that you are ready. So do it now in the comment section. Those of you who will be doing that, typing that I am ready, I'm telling you, you will be breaking records this year. But those who will never type, you know what's going to happen to you. So that's why I'm telling you, type it now. You miss this chance. I will never ask again. I will ask again that kind of, uh, you know, action next year so do it right now do it right now because next year i will never be asking you are you ready this is the right opportunity the best opportunity to claim and ex uh, you know claim in the ex entire universe shout in the entire universe that you are ready because if you are ready i have good news for you the entire universe will conspire to make it happen for you and uh you know in this program all right they keep telling that you know stretching matters so i'm telling you guys do not miss a lot of opportunities come your way today is 2021 with about what 370 or 350 days because there are 365 and today is january 15. we still have about 350 days to go and make every day count for you to be able to break barriers this year. So in retrospect, ladies and gentlemen, in summary, there are four key ingredients, very important key ingredients. And as I've said, it's not just a matter of having the right ingredients. You must be able to use them correctly because in baking a cake, it's just not a matter of gathering the right ingredients. It's also a matter of knowing how to mix them up, what is the right timing, and how you really love what you're doing. So key ingredients are preparation, character, offer something special, and there must be an opportunity that exists. Ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of you will break a lot of barriers this year. I'm excited for you. We are excited in empowered consumerism. We're excited for Edplan 2.0. We are excited in the whole industry. We will break barriers this year. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to each and every one of you power and God bless you.